Welcome to Electron Line. In this video, we're going to talk about the energy stored in an inductor. Imagine you have an inductor connected to a circuit and there's no current at all. There's no current going through the inductor. Then there's no energy stored in, um, in the inductor. But as you have current that's beginning to flow through the inductor, initially, the inductor will oppose that change in current going from zero amps to one amp and there will be an EMF induced that opposes the change but eventually current will flow through the inductor and by doing that there is an establishment of a magnetic field through the inductor that goes through the inductor and around the inductor and back through the inductor like this. As you continue to increase the current the magnetic field will continue to build up and become stronger 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 through the inductor and around the inductor like this. You're building up a magnetic field and that magnetic field stores a certain amount of energy. Now how much energy does an inductor store and how do we calculate that? We do it as follows. We start with the power equation where the power is equal to the voltage times the current. And of course with an inductor the voltage is equal to the inductance times the rate of change of the current with respect to time. Now to find the amount of energy stored it would be the amount of work done to develop that magnetic field. We can write this as the small amount of work done dW is equal to the power times dT. Remember that the definition of power is equal to work over time or energy over time. Of course of work you do is equal to the amount of energy you store in the inductor. So we can use the letter W for work or we can use the letter E for energy. Now to have the total work done which is equal to the total energy stored in the inductor we can say that W is equal to the integral of dW which is equal to the integral of P times dT. And of course P can be written as V times I so this is equal to the integral of V times I times dT and instead of writing V, we could write L times the IDT. After all, the potential across an inductor is equal to the inductance times the rate of change of the current with respect to time. So this can be written as the integral of L times the IDT times I times DT. Now notice that first of all, L is a constant that can come outside the integral sign and DT can be divided into the DT here that cancels out. So this can then be written as the amount of work done, which is equal to the amount of energy stored in the inductor, is equal to the inductance times the integral of I times dI. And the limits of integration is we start with zero current and we finally reach the final current in the inductor. And so this can then be written as L times I squared over two and the limits of integration from zero to final current when we plug in a zero, we get nothing. When we plug in the, the final i, we get equal to one-half times the inductance times the final current squared. So in other words, the energy stored inside of inductor, we can either write as W or E is equal to one-half the inductance times the current squared. And that's how it's done. That's how we find the energy stored in an inductor. 